Humanity's psychological song is this. Woe is me, woe is me. In a world I never made. In a world I never made. He says boo-hoo, and she too says boo-hoo in their victim Olympics. But I think to myself, what is everybody boo-hooing about? They act surprised that the world is unfair, unjust, and cruel. When they themselves are unfair, unjust, and cruel. So there is zero responsibility as far as accountability is concerned. They say, it's everybody but me. Because they point the finger and blame the other. And they say, while they are bad people themselves, they say, I hate this world because it's a bad place. So we live in a world where everybody bitches and complains about themselves while they give people their own reasons to bitch and complain. So it all kind of even it's, evens itself out at the end of the day. It's like we live in a society where everybody complains that their pussy hurts all the time while they themselves cause other people's pussy to hurt too. So the point is, I have a hard time um, going into sympathy with people who complain about their miserable lives because they make other people's lives miserable too. But the true victim is the person who is goodwilled entirely who says the world is fucking me over while he himself never under any circumstances fucks others over. Right? It's like somebody who is a loan shark who says this guy owes me money and I'm going to break his fucking legs until he pays me. When he himself owes a fuck ton of people money just the same, but he only plays the victim and cries like a little girl when it's happening to him. But when he does it to other people, it's okay. You know, this is absolutely unacceptable. And I would wager to say that the majority of people who complain about, say, for instance, their suspicion that their partner is cheating on them. Have they gone their whole life without also cheating on their partner behind their back? I would venture to say no. You know, somebody who, compl you know, who has road rage and gets angry that this person took his parking spot or cut him off on the road. Has he never taken somebody else's parking spot or cut somebody else off on the road? I would wager to say he has. But as long as he's making other people's pussy hurts and his pussy doesn't hurt, then it's all okay. It it's only becomes a problem when people complain when it's happening to them directly. Here's how to know whether or not you are a good person and you are worthy of empathy. If you get the shitty end of the stick in life, but you don't pass it on as a beast of burden to somebody else, then I would say you are. For instance, I have been cheated on, but I have never cheated on others. I have been screwed over financially, but I have never screwed anybody else over financially because I pay them the money of which I owe them. On principle. On principle, I am a good person, right? Because I don't cause other people to suffer. But it's always the people who cause others to suffer, and then they complain when they're suffering. It's stupid. 
I'm sick of it. I would wager to say that the majority of people who complain that their boss is a dick, if they were able to get away with it and take their seat of power, they would be a dick just the same, if not worse. It's like what William Blake said, the tyrant who removed the tyrant's head became a tyrant in his stead. There's a lot of wisdom in that statement. It's like if you go your entire life kicking people in the balls and laughing about it, and then you get kicked in the balls, and then you come to me and complain about it, I'm going to say, don't let the door hit your ass, because ain't nobody got time for that shit. People are always saying, pity me. Pity me. But I say, do you perform the activity on others that you are complaining about yourself? In all God honesty, I would say, in most cases, yes, they do. So be very careful who you give your pat on the back of encouragement to, because you see those crocodile tears coming down their face. You don't think they've ever caused crocodile tears to shed down other people's faces? It's just something to think about. Proceed with caution with a sort of sympathetic skepticism as far as who you allow to gain your favor as far as taking your hat off and, you know, bowing your head and saying, oh, poor you, you sorry son of a bitch. Because that same pain that he is feeling is the exact same pain that he most likely afflicted upon somebody else and made them feel too. A lot of times people are getting their just desserts. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I am not telling you to be cold and callous under the suspicion that one's agony should not be recognized because it's the same agony that he inflicted upon somebody else. You don't know that to be true. You can theorize that it is most likely the case, but you shouldn't jump to conclusions. That's why I use the term sympathetic skepticism. Because I feel that a lot of people are a sort of energy vampire upon others when it comes to being pitied. People pay billions of dollars every year to get pity from a therapist. You know, certain blue-balled, friend-zoned people often get afflicted when it comes to that as well, you know? When somebody tries to take an emotional dump all over you and say, oh, just listen to all of my problems, even though those problems are the same problems they have inflicted upon others. I refer to this phenomena as the delusion of the injured party. As an illustration, let us take a layman who grabs a beer with his co-workers after a job well done. And he's drinking his Modelo, he's eating his hot wings, and all the while, he's complaining that he's got a limp dick and a broken heart because his wife is not giving him any hanky-panky because they're arguing and he's sleeping on the couch. And to, what's more, his guinea pig died on the same night. And he's just having a really rough time. And his co-workers are letting him cry on their shoulders. When all the while, all those animal bits and pieces, which most likely came from a different chicken, um, you know, were in a condition where they lived a life of torture in a battery cage where they couldn't even move. 
and essentially every time he eats a chicken leg, he killed a chicken because, uh, you know, ch the chicken's going to bleed out. The chicken's not going to be able to stand on its feet and it's going to die. So he eats a hundred hot wings, killing a hundred chickens, putting life of other organisms that have died and feeding upon that death so he may live. So he just murdered a hundred chickens and there he is complaining about his blue balls and his dead guinea pig. So this is what I mean by the delusion of the injured party. This is a psychopathic world of sadism. That is not my opinion. That is a matter of sober fact. And you either accept it and that makes you intelligent or you reject it and that makes you unintelligent. Because how can you not see it? How can you not see that this is a madhouse for the sick? That's what I mean by the delusion of the injured party. We live in a funny farm because the world is filled with nutcases. <laughs> so if their cruel and unusual punishment upon themselves, man's inhumanity to man, didn't exist, then the world would not be a sanitarium. Okay? Let me give you another example of the delusion of the injured party. You have Christians, for example, who complain about government, yet their Bible in Romans says that you should look upon all authority figures in power as an extension of God, and you should serve them and worship them in the same way that you would do so to God if he was in the flesh, because they are appointed by God as representatives of God. All beings that are in positions of power, God ordained it to be that way. But these people don't read their Bible, and they continue to say, I hate the government. I want freedom. They're infringing upon my rights. And at the same time, behind closed doors, when it comes to the toxic family dynamics of domestic abuse, you know, they're inflicting corporal punishment on their kids, spanking their ass, smacking them across the face, believing that it is their right to do so because it's my child. I'll do what I want. You mind your own fucking business. And I say to myself, if you're going to subjugate animals, you're going to subjugate your children, you're going to subjugate your significant other, subjugate people who work for your corporation, and yet you're going to complain that you're being subjugated by the government when you're just a microcosmic representation of that archetype? It's, it's, it's all fucking hypocrisy. People who bitch and complain, I take, for the most part, absolutely no pity upon them. No mercy whatsoever. They are sad, pathetic subhumans that are not worthy of so much as one word of response from my behalf. For the most part. I'm not making generalities. But I'm saying for the most part. Okay? There is a sort of Freudian death instinct that is being a dissolvent upon this reality. See, nature despises inferiority more so than anything else. And it is the great punisher when it comes to things that don't deserve to live. I call it the law of the terminal or the law of inevitable fatality. So here's the deal. Say you got 
rotting meat left out in the sun, what happens? Nature seeks to destroy it through vultures, maggots, and other scavengers that are going to get rid of that roadkill because it's unsanitary and it, quote, should not exist. The same thing is happening to the diabolical nature of humankind. It is so fucked up, beyond the point of any reconciliation, that what is happening right now is that this rotting meat that we call Earth has cosmic powers that are trying to kill it as a means of destroying its inferiority because its inferiority is despised and it was made inferior on purpose by whoever designed this construct so it can be a product of its hatred the human the the the, the grand architect put upon the human as its design to be something that was worthy of pain and agony and all of the cosmic forces are constantly attacking this rotting meat and seeking to dissolve its inferiority but it's a very slow kill and it's a slow and gradual process this vicious cycle this downward spiral this fuck job that we call existence as we know it. You cannot expect, as a species, to be this inferior and expect to stay alive. You, it, it, you, it just can't. When you become an abomination, there are going to be forces that are going to perform entropy upon you. Because stupidity deserves to be killed. And it is not my opinion, it is really humanity um, inviting it. They are stripping themselves naked, bathing in Vaseline. They are prostrating themselves with both cheeks spread. And they are saying, have your way with me. And their inferiority is recognized. It is despised. And it is actively being eaten alive by vultures, maggots, and scavengers that we call the powers that should not be, but are, because really, according to law, they should be, because if humanity was not a sorry sack of shit, all of these things that take place wouldn't even be a possibility. So when everybody is complaining, I want you to understand that this world is a byproduct of the human will at large. The majority of humans are willing the world to be the way that it is. And because of such, hey, your wish is my command. Is, is this what you want? By all means, here you go. And you and I are stuck in the crossfire, spirited man, of this demiurgic madness that has made the world into a louche farm. And you cannot survive as an organism while being this inferior. There will be forces that are going to have a feeding frenzy upon your disgustingness as an organism. Remember that psychological song, woe is me, woe is me, in a world I never made, in a world I never made, when in all actuality, this world is a byproduct of human consciousness. Those who cry victim are the same ones that have created the world that spirited man is trapped in. 
So I say, fuck them all to death. Fuck them all to death. Let me simplify my language. When you enslave, you will be enslaved. When you are evil, you will have evil forces preying upon you. That is the terminal illness that I call the law of fatality unto death. Now, it's not designed to kill you immediately. It's like a boil the frog sort of a thing where it takes centuries to get to its climax. And don't think once it gets to its climax, it's going to end there. They're just going to create another reset and they're going to do the same thing all over again. History repeats itself. What we call the last few centuries is just a repeat of the same fuckery that took place <laughs> that we can only speculate through archaeology. And that's just in this space-time continuum that we call the this matrix, this simulation. There's been other simulations and future simulations to come. because th Because this fucking species is like a lab rat. It's like an inhumane science experiment. We're like these fucking crash test, test dummies that were made to be stupid. And through that stupidity, you have no choice but to perpetuate evil. Because, hey, like father, like son. You know? Creator, creation, and creature are one. So, the demiurgic creator, who is evil made his creature, which is his creation, to be an extension of themselves, a.k.a. evil. So it's like, it's all inseparable. Humanity, the Demiurge, and the world at large, it's all ultimately one thing that is cannibalizing itself, giving you the delusion from the human perspective that it's coming from the outside. There is no contradiction or inconsistency in anything that I just said. Yes, humanity was made deliberately to be an inferior product, to be worthy of hatred, because why would you want to, quote, humanize your, your food source, your slave race? You wouldn't do that. You would lobotomize it to be a good little worker bee connected to a hive to serve the queen, which is the Demiurge. Humanity is like a mouthful of spaghetti dangling from a bottomless pit that's just being <laughs> sucked up forever. And it never ends. And it was made that way. So when I'm speaking upon the law of the terminal illness or the law of fatality, it was made to be that way on purpose. This rotting meat is attracting to it nothing but scavengers. Because humanity is vibrating at the frequency of pure fucking evil. And therefore, you can only attract what you are frequency matched to, which is pure fucking evil. And that's my cosmology. That is my worldview. And I know it's not pretty. Certainly it's far from sexy. But, hey, you know, I don't mean to be the bear of bad news, but that's the only thing that makes sense to me. So if you would like to add me on Facebook, you can do so at Fish Corbett. That is F-I-S-H-C-O-R-B-E-T-T. -T. And also feel free to join my Discord server. I am going to put a link to that in the comments below.